Okay, this video is going to take triangles or objects that are in real life that can be connected um, to form a right triangle. And we're going to use our thinking from finding slope on a coordinate graph to also help us find that in real life objects. So to think back, here's a coordinate grid. I've got a triangle over here. I have a triangle over here. This is my rise, this is my run, this is my rise, this is my run. So whatever amount this is, I was, I was getting the quantity by just counting the boxes. And then I would put that as the numerator. And then for my run, I would just, again, count the boxes, and then I would put that for the run. Then that would be the slope of this triangle. So now we're going to take that theory, we're going to put it into real life. If, for example, I had a triangle just sitting out, it's not in a coordinate grid, but they look like this, and I have numbers over here, um, 6 and 3, and then 12, and I don't know, we're going to figure it out by using this concept of rise over run, or the height over the base. Here's the first one we're going to check out. It says Rosie is building a wheelchair ramp that's 24 feet long and 2 feet high. So the whole entire ramp is 24 feet. And then the height at the end of the ramp is 2 feet. So now I already know the slope of the whole entire ramp because the rise is 2 and the run is 24. The part that I'm missing for my small triangle, it says she needs to install a vertical support piece that's 8 feet from the end of the ramp. And then we're trying to figure out how tall this line would be. I'm going to take and draw these two triangles separately so that I can focus on them as individuals. Okay. The numbers that I do know, the small triangle is 8. The entire ramp, because it doesn't stop right here with the 24, it says it extends all the way. So I know the bottom is total 24 for the whole ramp. And I know the height of the ramp is 2 overall. Just like we said before, the up and down... This is going to be your rise. This is going to be your run. So if I said, what's the slope, the slope of the big triangle, which is on for my class, that is one of their questions, the slope of the big triangle would be 2 over 24, or I can simplify that to be 112. Okay? The part that I'm missing, I can't get the slope of the small triangle yet because I don't know how long this line is supposed to be for that support piece. I'm going to put an X in that position because I don't know it right now. But once I get it, I can say the slope of that small triangle. Now, there's a way to solve for a missing piece. I'm going to set up two ratios or two fractions. The small triangle is x over 8 and the big triangle is 2 over 24. For me to find this missing number, one way to solve is to look and see if you can find a relationship going um, sideways or going up and down. This one happens to have a relationship going sideways because 8 times 3 makes 24. So something times 3 makes 2. Well, that's not a whole number, so it may not be easy for you to figure out um, on your own. But what I can do is multiply these two together. 8 times 2 is 16. And then after I do that, I'm going to divide by 24. And my answer will be what this is supposed to, um, the height of that support be. 16 divided by 24 is 
0.66 repeating. The measurement now that was supposed to be here for the height of that support beam is 0.66 repeating. And once I put that in, let's say I were, if I was to put this right here, 0.66 repeating, now I know the rise the rise is 0.66 repeating, and the run is 8. So when I want to write the slope of the small triangle, the rise over the run, I know normally we don't have a um, fraction on that, so it seems kind of weird, but I'm going to move that out of the way, enlarge this, and write it in for you. The slope of the small triangle is... 0.66 repeating over 8, which looks really weird, but that's the answer we got. And then we also said that, for people in my class who are trying to solve this, the length of the ramp, all the measurements, measurements were in feet, so let's just put it in feet and not worry about inches right now. 0.66 repeating um, is the height in feet of the support beam. All right, here's another example. It says the lower cable meets the tree at a height of six feet, and then it extends out 16 feet from the base of the tree. If the triangles are similar, how tall is the tree? So I'm gonna underline or I'm gonna highlight some important information. This is talking about the lower cable. So when I draw these two triangles separately, here is the tree. Um, the lower cable is the one I just drew. And it says it meets the tree at a height of six feet. So that's going to be six. And it says it extends out 16 feet. So this is going to be 16. Right now, the small triangle, I already know the slope of it because, again, this is the rise and this is the run. When we have triangles on a graph, the up and down is the rise and the sideways is the run. So people in my class filling out this homework sheet, the slope of the small triangle, right now I already know it, it is 6 over 16, or that can simplify to be 3 eighths. Let me get that out of the way now. Because we are trying to figure out um, the height of the entire tree, so that's the ultimate goal. But then there's other questions in there for you to answer. All right, so there's the whole tree. There's the long um, extension going out. The diagram shows you that the entire thing from the base of the tree out to this point is 56. So I'm going to put 56 right here. And then we don't know the height of the entire tree. I could try to go ahead and do my slope, but right now I don't know it because I don't know my rise amount. I do know that the run is 56. In order for me to solve that, I'm going to take... My information, I'm going to set up two triangles so I can solve to figure out how much it is. 6 over 16, I'm going to set that up with the other triangle, which is, I don't know, over 56. To solve that, what I'm going to do is, I could think about sideways if I could possibly turn six into 16 into 56. Um, I'm not really going to worry about that. What I'm going to do is multiply these two. 6 times 56 equals 333. And then 330, oh my gosh, 336, not 333. 336 divided by 16 is 21. So now that number is supposed to be the height of the entire tree. 21 should go up here. And once I know that, then this is going to be the rise. 
and this is going to be the run for the large triangle. I've got 21 over 56 and I'm going to make this big and put it up here just so I can write on it better. 21 over 56. I can also simplify that because both of these are divisible by 7. So my answer for this would be 3 eighths. I'm pretty sure that's the answer we got just a moment ago for the other one. So these two triangles have the exact same slope as what we're looking at. And the reason that these two have the exact same slope is because they are both connected. Their rise is going in the same direction. Part of the small one is connected to the top one. The same for the bottom. The run for the small triangle is also part of the run for the big triangle. Alright, example three. This one says a flagpole cast a shadow of 23.5 feet long. At the same time of day, Miss Gilbert, who is 5.5 feet tall, cast a shadow that's 7.5 feet long. How tall is the flagpole? And then it says round your answer to the nearest tenth. So ultimate goal is I want to know how tall this flagpole is, which could be a real life situation. You need to know how tall the pole is. In order to get that, I am going to draw these two triangles separately like I've done on a couple others. I've got the overall large flagpole with its shadow. I have the little teacher lady with her height and shadow. I know some of the numbers. Miss Gilbert is 5.5 feet tall. Her shadow is 7.5 feet long. Right now, I already know the rise and the run for the small triangle. I could fit that on my line for kids in my class who have this as their assignment. The small triangle is 5.5 over 7.5. Okay, I don't know the large one yet because I'm missing the height of the entire flagpole which is what I'm trying to do. In this question, they actually have set up a proportion right here and they're telling me to put the two fractions together. So 5.5 was Miss Gilbert. I need to put her shadow underneath and then the tree, they already have it set up too. So I don't even have to write that one myself. I'm gonna make this picture bigger so I can actually write on it. The first part says 5.5 and then that went with Miss Gilbert. And her shadow was 7.5. And then the tree height, what we need to look at and be careful on for this one is the bottom is only labeled so far right now. It's stopping right here. That's 16. If I want the entire length of the shadow for the flagpole, I have to add these two together. So I know how long it is. So 16 plus 7.5 is 23.5. I'm going to scoot this back over and make it where I can write a little bit better. 23.5 right there. Okay, now I'm going to solve this. I can multiply the numbers that are diagonal and then divide. This one's... Um, way too hard for me to see uh, maybe how they are related. It might be times 3 though, I'm thinking. Um, so 23 times 5.5 would be what I'm going to do. 23.5 times 5.5 and that is 129.25 and then once I know that I'm going to take my answer, 129.25, and divide it by 7.5. And that is 17.23 repeating. 17.23 repeating. 17.23 repeating. Now I'm going to put that up here because I have more space. 
17.23 repeating. And once that's done, now I, whoop, that's all messed up. Uh, now I know the slope of the large triangle because I know the rise and the run. And again, this measurement is going to kind of be weird, but I'm going to put it in anyways. The rise is 17.23, three repeating, all the way over the entire length of that shadow was 23.5.